I saw the quote um, attributable to ANC President Oliver Tambo. Uh, it was in 1987 in his January the 8th statement. Um, he said to particularly young people of South Africa that we must proceed from the position that our task is to win a revolution. Now that's the question. The question is, is the state has been captured, but to whose advantage? And this is why then we have this question this afternoon, this morning, where we are saying to you, is, is uh, corruption counter-revolutionary? Uh, uh, Mr. Tambo here saying that we must capture the state, but on behalf of the masses and make sure that the transformation happens as we would like it to. Uh, is corruption anti-revolutionary? Well, uh, of course, as I indicated earlier, the answer is obviously yes. It is counter-revolutionary because it doesn't advance the cause of the struggle for liberation, for the transformation of society and the country as a whole. My view is that uh, uh, the, 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 the father of, of corruption uh, is, uh, in, our, in our society currently is, um, is colonialism. A colonialism was characterized by the, by the, by the theft of land uh, because corruption is uh, an element of, of, of theft in it. Now, colonialism, as we know, it was about uh, the dispossession of people, natives of their land. And uh, in the traditional African communal setting, land, land is owned by the community as a whole. But you find that uh, the legacy of that colonialism is such that there are people who sleep out in the open, who sleep under cardboard boxes. And uh, I think that system that spawns that kind of situation is itself corrupt. Now, when the liberators of uh, the people of South Africa uh, took over, they uh, didn't bring about the kind of change that was going to result in the restoration of the patterns that were there before colonialism started. So I'm saying, therefore, that uh, for this corruption to be addressed, there's a need to go to the fundamentals, uh, to, to, to try as much as we can to ensure that land is again redistributed. Let's quickly then move to the Deputy Minister of Health. Please, sir, that's uh, Mr. Badula. Mr. Badula. My starting point is that um, South Africa um, um, is characterized, or let me say that corruption in itself, um, to me it's about survival of the fittest in the world of dog eat dog. And it is characterized by economic system uh, called capitalism that excretes greediness and um, crass materialism. And I want to argue that um, the system in itself excretes opulence and wealth. There is nothing wrong about wealth, but there is everything wrong about uh, wealth exhibition. And I think this question of um, equating wealth to corruption is problematic because the system of capitalism in itself produces business people and capitalist bourgeoisie and petty bourgeoisie. Can I, can I as a politician um, in, in government have a luxury of driving a Ferrari in the streets of Soweto? What am I saying to our people? That's the fundamental question. It means we can't conform to the system but it does not mean those who amass wealth, in particular black and African, are actually corrupt by definition. Um, in fact, blacks in this country, in the stock exchange, account for less than 5%, if not 5%, of wealth. And this economy is still white male dominated. Corruption is counter-revolutionary, it must be obliterated if the ideals of our national democratic revolution are to be attained. This is a clarion call not only to public sector, but to all sectors of society, including private sector. Thank you. Thank you very much.